This is Dr. Scott McLean and this is a YouTube video about implant dentistry. During this presentation we'll be talking about implant space versus prosthetic space and how to plan this using the all in four treatment concept. So during this concept the uh, bone a lot of times has to be reduced down so we have to figure out where do we want the implants in order to make this all in four shelf which is so important for prosthetics because it's the prosthetics that we want to plan for because we want to create enough space so that we have a bar, the multi-units, the teeth and the acrylic all in a conventional kind of manner so that we can have the multi-units being about one millimeter below tissue then having the bridge be slightly convex so it can make it very cleansable. In order to figure out how much space you're going to require for your prosthetics, it's always prudent to look at what you're opposing. If you're opposing natural teeth, you're going to probably need a little bit more space. If you're opposing a uh, full denture, then it's going to be less. So we try to look at that and then we also try to see if we can plan this out so that we can maximize the AP spread. So by keeping the implants a little bit higher, we can maximize the AP spread. So it's kind of a balance between how much space you're going to use for the implants versus how much space you're going to use for the prosthetics. We also want to try to plan so that the cylinders have acrylic in front of them so that we're not cutting into the anterior teeth and trying to keep some acrylic so that these teeth can be really bonded in because that's always important when we go to make the bars to have some space for acrylic. And ideally there's about three millimeters of acrylic around the bar so that uh, we have maximum strength for a hybrid prosthesis. Once we establish the occlusal plane by doing what I call a digital face bow, so transferring the face bow from your models into Nobel Clinician, then we can start planning the space. So the minimum space I like to have is 15 millimeters of prosthetic space and going to a maximum of about 18. So some people like 18. 15 is usually about where I want my minimum. Once we have this occlusal plane mapped out, we can do this in the software, then we can measure up 15 millimeters, and this is where the start of the implants could be placed. If you're choosing a deeper space, then it could be higher. Keep in mind that the uh, higher you go, and you're angling implants next to the sinus, that you're going to minimize your AP spread the higher that you do go. As we move this occlusal plane up, You'll notice that this is where we want the top of the implant. So the head of the implants would be up at this level. So we have above what's called the implant space and then below which is called the prosthetic space. So we need to plan both of those two spaces out to be appropriate for the loads that we're going to apply on this particular system. So we're really bioengineering this case by placing implants in order to maximize the AP spread and to provide a graphless type of implant placement, we're able to tip these implants in the particular zones. So the zones we're going to look at are zone 1, which is in the anterior zone. This is from Bedrosian et al. paper in 2008. And then of course, in zone 2. So in zone 2, it's just ahead of the sinus. So we're going to look at these particular zones and see how the bone looks. Now that we know where the occlusal plane is and that 15 millimeters above occlusal plane, we can place the implants in these areas and check the buccal lingual width, the angulation compared to where the teeth are going to be. We can start to see a number of different factors where the sinuses are, what the AP spread is going to be. So you can start to really plan this case out from both a prosthetic space and also an implant space because both need to be given some thought before you plan this particular case out. And so by looking here we can see zone 1 is good. We can also see that zone 2 is going to be good on this particular case. If we turn off the patient model now, we can see the position of the implants based on the angulation being about 30 degrees. We can see the Nobel Parallel CC implant, which is going to provide extra soft tissue around the uh, top of the implant, especially when the multi-units go on. So you can, can see the, uh, the way that the yellow platform shift is on top of the implant. We can also see the 45 degree bevel. So when the multi-units go on, you get this platform shift effect that enables you to keep a little bit more soft tissue. In fact, it shows that that will stabilize the implant a little bit better and seal the implant off. Now, in order to tell the uh, implant surgeon what's going on, 
you're going to do some bone reduction here so you can see by looking at Nobel clinician we can see 15 millimeters of bone reduction it's going to mean that we have to take a certain amount of bone so then you can use a bone reduction guide for the uh, surgeon to be using during surgery so here we're going to take off about 4.8 to 5 millimeters of bone on this particular side if we go to the other side we're going to take a little bit more which is going to be about 6.8 so by the time you take the roots out and get the bone reduced down then this is where we're going to be from a particular bone reduction to give us that prosthetic space and to create that all-in-four treatment shelf that we need last we can take this data and transfer it to the patient's face uh, using a model based uh, approach we can see that uh, in this particular case it have enough of a transition zone so the implants would be quite hidden based on the seclusal plane. So this is Dr. Scott McLean and this has been a YouTube video about implant dentistry.